What I've noticed and which is crazy is that there's so many people who just get better when we just fixed the organs that are responsible for digesting food mm. rather than the intestinal, you know, the intestinal tract where the microbiome is. Is the root cause of gut issues deeper than we think? Is it more than the microbiome? Is it more expansive? And what's the insider information? What is causing gut issues and what's the insider info? Yeah, so I've been, um, I've been really, uh, it's been a beautiful journey for me in terms of gut health. Um, after residency, I got uh, positioned to lecture for Microbiome Labs. So those are the guys that have developed Megaspore and the probiotic and done all the research on the microbiome. Um, and so they really brought me under the wing and taught me everything. And so I had a huge amount of education and then started seeing all these patients, right, because I was lecturing and just, it, it was beautiful because I would see like directly clinical experience with what I was doing and their clinical correlations and their symptoms and functional labs and all that stuff. And so got a lot of experience with treating a whole host of dysfunction. And what's funny is it always came to me to the foundation of the gut, even before the intestines. So a lot of people think about the microbiome, but they don't really think about the different organ systems that are associated, right? So you have your oral pharynx, you have your mouth, you have your esophagus, you have your stomach, pancreas, gallbladder, uh, and then it goes into the intestinal tract, right? And so as it goes into the intestinal tract, then you have your small intestine, your large intestine, so you have all these different facets of the gut. So what does the gut mean? And it's, you know, as if you're not a doctor, it's a lot to take in. Even if you are a doctor, it's a lot to take in. So um, I started understanding that one of the biggest causes of gut health is anxiety. Really, ultimately, right? And so, you know, Joe Dispenza talks about this a lot. A lot of... Um, a lot of people in mental health talk about this a lot, is that we have two modes of our nervous system, fight, flight, arrest, and digest. And when we are not in a fight, flight, we are resting and digesting, meaning that we bring in the blood supply to the proximal organs. And those are I just mentioned, the stomach, the pancreas, and the gallbladder. And if those systems are dysfunctional, meaning they're not producing enough things to break down the foods that you eat, then the microbiome is secondary because then it has to do the job of digesting the foods and then depending on how many antibiotics you've had and how many heavy metals and mold and fungal infections and you know, so forth, depending on how that's going, if your microbiome is also then compromised, that results in a whole host of issues. Mm. But what I've noticed and which is crazy is that there's so many people who just get better when we just fixed the organs that are responsible for digesting food. Mm. rather than the intestinal, you know, the intestinal tract where the microbiome lives. Man, but we over here in medicine and research, we have a big magnifying glass looking at the microbiome, yeah. trying to organize all the species, put data, understand them, do all the research, isolate them. Yeah. But really what you're talking about is what we as naturopathic doctors do, look yeah. at the whole system, yeah. and you're talking about upstream. Yeah. So you're saying if the pancreas isn't working right, right, the gallbladder, liver, bile, yeah. the stomach ain't working right, then yeah. all of a sudden downstream, of course your of bacteria course. is gonna be all messed right. up. So then that begs the natural question, what the heck, how do we start to optimize these organs and what's causing them to be yeah. dysfunctioned in the first place? Yeah, so we used to, you know, depending on the ancestral lineage that you come from, likely your ancestry had some sort of a bitter before it ate right? Super basic stuff. Why did you guys have bitters? Because bitter causes an increased amount of saliva. Saliva has amylase in it, which breaks down starch, which gets your stomach acid to produce more hydrochloric acid, which breaks down the protein, which then signals to the gallbladder to release bile, which breaks down fat, and to the pancreas to release enzymes that break down other carbohydrates. So this is a system that gets started with, and so now what are, what's everybody doing? They're going through the drive-thru, they're super stressed, they're on their phone, their dopamine's going nuts, their cortisol's going nuts, right? They're not in a digestive place. They're smashing food down. They're not getting, right? And it's usually like some typical standard American, right? Even if you're eating healthy, right? It doesn't really matter. Even if you're eating healthy, but you're eating in a rushed place, you're not getting enough production. That the juices take a little bit of time to, to, to make. Mm -hmm. And if you're not getting enough uh, digestive juices flowing, 
you're ultimately getting unabsorbed food going into the intestine, in which case the microbiome then takes control. And we do know how important the microbiome is ultimately because it does regulate almost every physiological process in the body. However, if you're not giving it the foundational elements and, and the right, like, it's like putting like the wrong type of gasoline in the car. The, gas, the car can drive, everything needs to work f functionally, but if the gas is wrong, the gas is wrong. The gas right? is wrong, exactly. Yeah. That's a good picture of the way to look at it, right? Yeah. So that is everyone. And, and look, by admission, me, me even, like I'm like, okay, I got a nice, nice meal, but oh man, I really need to answer all of these DMs. There's too many questions on here. Yeah. And I need to answer this text and I need to look yeah. at my schedule. So I'm kind of eating, trying to like eat slowly, but also looking at all this other stuff. Yeah. And dude, I noticed by the time I finish eating, I've already answered emails, but my stomach just feels really full, yeah. you know? So uh, it's funny, last episode was about mindful eating. Yes and how to do it. And actually, yeah. your glycemic index is lower yeah. if you mindfully eat. Yeah. You eat slower, yeah. you eat more mindfully, your, yeah. your blood sugar isn't spiking. Doesn't so spike. exactly. It's powerful stuff to think about. All right, one of our next partners that I've been using for such a long time, one of my favorite ones here on Heal Thyself is Athletic Greens. It's useful. I use it every day. Why? I use it for energy, but when I'm on the go and I know I'm not gonna be able to really make a big salad or make a lot of greens, I put it into my drink in the mornings and then I get out of the house really fast. Athletic Greens is important because one, it doesn't taste super healthy, but it is. You know how those green powders have that earthy, kind of just dirt-ish taste to it that you don't really wanna eat and you associate with healthy? Well, not this stuff. It's actually delicious. It's got a mix of vanilla and pineapple to taste. But what's in it is 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, adaptogens. It helps you get your day started right. Contains less than a gram of sugar. And here's my favorite, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, no artificial anything. And it still tastes good. It helps support better sleep quality, recovery. And for me, what I see the most, mental clarity and alertness. And it's a small micro habit, right? You do it a little bit every single day, for a while and you notice big benefits. It's the one thing that I do every single day to help take care of myself. So regardless, even if I am having a salad and a bunch of vegetables, it's still going in my morning smoothie. I only partner here at Heal Thyself with brands that I believe in, you know this. Athletic Greens is one of them and they're a great company focused on sustainability. For one, they're a climate neutral certified company and in 2020 they purchased carbon credits that supports projects protecting old growth rainforests. Now, additionally, for every purchase, they donate to organizations that help get nutritious foods to kids who need them the most, including No Kid Hungry here in the United States. And in 2020, Athletic Greens donated over 1.2 million meals to children. Now, to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs for your first purchase. And those travel packs are useful, especially if you're moving around. You want some of the goodies, especially when you're eating all that junk, when you're on vacation, coming back to your greens. All you gotta do is visit athleticgreens.com slash heal thyself. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash heal thyself to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance that I love. One of my favorite magnesium products out there is by Ned, and it's their Mellow Magnesium. It's a super powerful daily magnesium supplement. It's got amino acids and trace minerals. It ain't just magnesium, it's a combination of all the things that you need to take to help the magnesium really get in your body too. Taking Mellow Magnesium is really helpful for me at reaching goals for my memory, my mood, brain function, stress response, nerve and muscle help, and just overall sleep. With Ned's Mellow Magnesium, I'm experiencing better sleep because I'm taking it right before bed and I know it's really helpful. Less stress because I'm taking it in the morning also, especially if we're getting ready for my day. Less inflammation, especially after workouts. Ned's products are full of premium CBD and full spectrum of active cannabinoids, terpenes, flavonoids, and trichomes. You want it all, all of the goodies, all the ingredients that make it a whole product, not just an isolate, are in there. Ned's Full Spectrum Hemp Oil nourishes the body's endocannabinoid system, something we all have that responds to this really powerful, powerful medicine to offer functional support for stress, sleep, inflammation, and balance. Now become the best version of you by taking this stuff. You're gonna get 15% off of Ned's products with the code DRG. Go to helloned.com slash DRG, enter the code DRG at checkout. Again, that's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com slash DRG, and you're gonna get 15% off. 
Thank you, Ned, for sponsoring the show and offering our listeners a natural remedy for some of life's most common health issues. Um, for people, okay, people who don't know the physiology behind us, how is the stomach, the pancreas, and the bile all working together in the beginning upstream? So it's actually pretty incredible. So you have three components of your food, right? You have your carbohydrates, you have your lipids or your fats, same thing, and then you have your proteins. That's what makes up all the food. And so you have an organ system that is responsible for breaking down every single, each one of those components. You have three organ systems for the three components that make up all food. So your pancreas breaks down carbohydrates, your stomach breaks down protein, and your gallbladder breaks down fat. It's beautiful, right? It's like nature designed it. <laughs> <laughs> like nature knew what it was doing, Like nature knew what it was doing. It was like, oh, let's put an organ system responsible for this food group. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so what happens in the body if you're not breaking down protein enough? So if you don't break down protein, and this is, um, this is actually like a side passion of mine to really get people off PPIs, protein pump inhibitors, or if, like, like a meprazole, if you've heard of that. What is wrong with protein pump inhibitors? So protein pump inhibitors, they decrease um, stomach acid, right? And, the, and that's a problem because, first of all, your stomach acid is how you break any bacteria that's coming into the colon, right? So if you're having a bad type of germ that's in your food, your stomach acid is there as, as first as part of your innate protective uh, immune system to break down bad bacteria. But it's also they're responsible for breaking down proteins into amino acids, which are the building blocks of all your DNA, of all your cells, of everything, right? Collagen, bone, everything is made out of protein. So if you're maldigesting protein, that's a big problem because you may not be absorbing the amino acids that you need to replicate your DNA and sustain health. Mm -hmm. Which, e e only that, right? Yeah. <laughs> you mean for life? Yeah, for life. So not only can it affect potentially your immune system and then introducing bad bacteria, which will mess up your microbiome, things like H. pylori or things like C. diff or E. coli, right? Like mm -hmm. you might ha have introductions of bad prepared food, right? Sanitary issues. Mm -hmm. um, and then that'll mess the ecology of the, of the microbiome. But also, then you may not be just digesting properly. And then on top of that, then the hydrochloric acid signals the other organs to start firing. Mm, that's the chain. That's the chain. So, and that's how it works upstream. You're yeah. saying then PPIs, protein pump inhibitors, heartburn medicine, will reduce heartburn but predispose you to disrupted ecology of the microbiome yeah. from bacteria because you're not killing it. Right and then also poor protein digestion. Exactly. So you're not getting the absorption of those essential right. amino acids, right? Exactly. Okay. And so, then even further than stopping the signal of the pancreas and the gallbladder to fire as, as much. So, so, you're, so right now the stomach is essential for all of the digestion. It's the most upstream you're saying, right? I, I think so. I mean, technically your, your saliva signals yeah. your stomach acid to start. Chewing your food. Chewing your food. Okay, right. so we so start it starts, there. It starts with chewing your food. Don't scarf it down. <laughs> yeah. It's funny It's funny because I, I went, when I was in uh, a clinic, a lot of people would say, I got all these gut issues. I bloat and I burp nonstop when I eat and I feel bloated again. And I go, okay, let's start before I give you not even any supplement, chew your food. Like, yeah. I chew my food. And then they do one week of like, intentional yeah, chewing of the food and they're like, I feel like it's gone. Yeah. Right? It's funny how something yeah. as simple as like liquefying your food yeah. and then swallowing it can make a big difference. Yeah. So and also it gets you into, right, like nervous system wise, if it taps you out of that fight flight, which is important also because you're sending nervous, your brain is firing neurons to those organ systems to get them to produce that action. Mm. And if you are checking your phone and doing all that stuff, it can. It's in, it's in a go. It's in a stressful sp yeah. spot, right? Yeah. So, so eating mindfully really is the first, first step. It's the first step. And how, in what way, when, when you're not busy in Beverly Hills with all your clients coming in, what way do you find yourself eating mindfully? I have a cheat code. What's the cheat code? <laughs> bitters. Give, give us the hack. Okay, so, so you love these bitters. Bitters for me are probably the, one of the most incredible things of all time, especially for us. I mean, if you're having a very acidic diet and you're having way too much acid, then no, bitters are going to make things worse. I just don't find that clinically as much. I find everybody kind of benefits with bitters. Mm. So I take bitters a few minutes before I eat, even if I eat quickly or if I'm on the go or whatever, bitters for me 
with a little bit of digestive enzymes, and that's the game changer for me. Really? Yeah. So, so you love the combination. Mm. And bitters, for all people who don't know, it, you know, we know them from like the bar when they yeah. add bitters to our drink. Exactly. Yeah. It's the same deal. Exactly. It's anything that causes our, like orange peel, for example, yeah. that causes that saliva production, exactly. hydrochloric acid, gets our body prepped and ready. Yeah. So that's a nice little cheat code. So imagine doing yeah. that cheat code and mindfully eating. Ooh, you'd be on <laughs> fire, man. You'd be on fire. I love that. So you said something important. HCL signaling downstream the other organs. Yeah. So if you're on a PPI, you ain't signaling the other organs, so it's causing downstream effects. Just harder, right? It's harder. And then further, like, I just lectured at the PLMI uh, two weeks ago in Denver about H. pylori. I don't know if we want to go into that, but how H. pylori signals can cascade like all autoimmune disease. How? Um, it turns on the inflammatory cytokines that are responsible for the induction of autoimmunity. It, so poor stomach acid, you're saying? So if you have poor stomach acid, H. pylori is passed person to person or dog to person. It's actually common in households. It's everywhere. It's like 30% of the population or more. 40% of the population carries this. Mm -hmm. So it's a natural organism. But what happens is it'll affect the part of the stomach that's kind of poor for hydrochloric acid. It'll invade it, and th this is what causes ulcers. So when people have even like mouth ulcers, you know, mouth ulcers, any ulcers in the body, H. pylori is usually the bacteria that causes that. So H. pylori will then create this inflammation and then this long-term inflammation will literally bore into the lining in the stomach and then turn on these cytokines, which are these inflammatory immune uh, molecules that will then turn on autoimmunity. That's crazy it's to think. Crazy to think. Crazy to think crazy. that H. pylori could be the cause of autoimmunity. Yeah. Because so many people suffer with autoimmune disease and so we many. talk about all the things, right. but could really, and this is why a lot of people say gut health, autoimmunity. Right. Could be the big connection aside yeah. from like the leaky gut, whatever yeah. we're talking about. This yeah. might be the most upstream thing. Yeah, the most upstream thing in, in the creation of autoimmunity that I've discovered so far. Wow. Okay. So H. pylori is there. It's, it's, disrupting your ability to release? It's, it releases uh, urea and ammonia, mm -hmm. which then neutralizes the pH and shuts down the further production of more um, hydrochloric acid. So it can live? So it can live. Wild. Right. And then we're suffering because then we start having to go, okay, what's happening? My digestion yeah. is poor. And now if you're on a PPI, like... <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. Because because oftentimes yeah. it, it, uh, it is a big sign of um, H. pylori infection, heartburn. Do we see that? Um, it's more ulcerations. I guess ulcerations. it could be heartburn. Yeah. yeah, I guess it could be heartburn. It's more pain. Mm. H. pylori is like really like epigastric pain, mm. um, potentially belching, but then it could like ulcerate into the stomach and then create bleeding. And if we have mouth sores, yeah. that might be a sign? H. pylori can cause mouth sores, so canker sores, that kind of stuff, that could be H. pylori also. Because a lot of people okay, hey, say, hey, Dr. G, I keep getting mouth sores, yeah. it's, it's getting worse, what's happening? Yeah. And little do they know it might be H. Yeah, it could be H. pylori. All right, so the pancreas. Yeah. Ooh, man, like this is, this is the organ. <laughs> yeah. I worked in oncology, I saw a lot of pancreatic cancer, and this, yeah. is, the, this is the craziest one of all. Yeah. Um, you said its role is in breaking down carbohydrates. Very important. Well, one of its. I mean, it releases insulin, right? Beta cells mm -hmm. for insulin management. It has a you know, bunch, bunch of functionality, mm -hmm. but pancreas health is so vital. So vital. And I think it's being left out of the conversation. I don't, I, how many times do you hear someone on a podcast going, listen, I am the foremost expert on pancreas health, <laughs> and I discovered all these things. Right. But, okay, so like, I'm listening to this, viewing it, and I go, okay, I have a pancreas. I want good insulin, and I want to break down my carbs the right way. Yeah. How do we start doing it? How do we give love to our pancreas? To me, the only way that I've seen is is helping it. Uh, well, we could we could go into the weight loss part if you want. Of course, everyone wants to lose weight. So the latest craze is something called Wagovi, um, which the compound. So that's the brand name. And the molecule that's, that's the responsible drug is called semaglutide. And I've been giving semaglutide like it's running out of fashion. <laughs> like everybody's on it for me. Um, it, I've just been seeing miracles left and right. On some, everybody, everybody loves it. On weight loss? For weight loss. H how so? Why, why is it working? So it's a GLP, 
GLP-1 agonist, meaning that, so that has seven classifications of what it does. So it increases, decreases motility a little bit. That's the only, da- that's the only negative, it decreases motility. But it increases um, glucose saturation. So like you could eat like a pint of ice cream and your glucose won't go above like 105. Interesting. It's crazy. So your glucose stabilizes throughout the day which decreases your satiety, so, um, or sorry, increases your satiety, so you're just, you're just, you're less hungry, so you're eating less calories, but your glucose is saturated, so you're, you're fine. Mm. You know, it's kind of like- You're not crashing. You're not crashing. Um, the only time you're crashing is if you're literally just not eating enough, mm-hmm. you know, because you're like, you feel so okay, and then you could feel a little bit fatigued, but for the most part, people feeling are amazing, and they're just like, they see the scale just like, Nick down. But why are people getting over the hump versus like just eating healthy and working out? I mean, I've been I've been working with people on weight loss for so long and optimizing thyroid and optimizing uh, uh, diet and all this stuff, and it really comes down to metabolism, you know. So there are, you know, specifically what I see is the population is women who are forty to sixty, they start going into perimenopause, and their cortisol basically starts to shut down and their metabolism starts to shut down, They're, they stop making enough hormone, their testosterone, right? All the things that keep our metabolism up. Yeah. And so for them to lose weight, they'd have to eat like 800 calories a day, mm. you know, because their metabolism goes to like 1,000 a day or 1,200. So they, you know, these are the women who are like, I've been eating this way my whole life, and now I just gained 20 pounds, mm. you know? And their thyroid's okay and everything checks out, and it's because they'd have to eat literally like a rabbit to get them under the caloric amount to lose weight. Because their metabolism changes. Because their metabolism changes. So when we optimize their hormones and then we put them on semi-glutide, for some reason it increases the amount of insulin that the pancreas makes, and then it saturates their glucose levels so their body doesn't have to retain onto this extra fat and they just start dropping. Wow, so for all the people out there, so you're saying from your professional opinion, this is something safe that people can try. The FDA released it as a, uh, an approved weight loss drug, which I'm always skeptical of the FDA. Right. I'm always skeptical about weight loss drugs, but I gotta say, I love it. I, I find people are, they're performing great on it. Um, they're dropping the weight that they want on it. It's helping. I think it's anti-aging because it increases the amount of insulin you're making from the pancreas. I think it keeps the pancreas healthy. Um, the only thing that there was one negative study on one species of rats. Mm. That's it. That's the only negative press that this thing has gotten. And and have they tested it on humans too? Yeah, a ton. Tons. Yeah, nothing. Safe. Yeah. Interesting. That's why the FDA approved it. I love this. I love to hear that. I mean, I was like, this is too good to be true. And then I was like, and then I started using it on, on myself and some patients and I was like, this is crazy. How about I come to you before summer? Uh, yeah. Three months before summer. Let's do it. And we'll get a nice summer, yeah. summer sweet summer some vibe. Some peptides, some stem cells. I love that, man. I'm gonna be, I love that. Okay, Transform well, your body. Well, thanks for bringing that because I, I, yeah. I personally haven't, I haven't been in that world. I haven't heard about it. Yeah. Um, so now we're, 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 we're seeing the pancreas. We got, you know, for me, it's like I think about the pancreas and root vegetables or foods that kind of look yeah. like sweet potatoes yeah. for the pancreas. So really looking at what sort of foods are, one, balancing your glucose. Yeah good amount of fiber, taking out those inflammatory foods, high sugar foods that yeah. are overworking the pancreas. But now we're moving downstream. Yeah. And you were talking about no one talking about bile yeah. for your overall health, especially your gut health. Yeah. Why is bile so important to gut health? So I actually think like, so all three organs are incredibly important, right? So pancreas is incredibly important for breaking down your carbs. Stomach, obviously we just talked about the importance of that. But everybody's leaving gallbladder out of the discussion too. And bile washes your duodenum before you eat. And and, uh, somebody told me recently the consistency of our bile apparently is changing. Yeah, he literally pulls me aside and he's like, because he heard me talking about gallbladder and he was like, I I just want you to know like it's very accurate because I'm seeing actually the consistency change. It feels more like sand now and it should feel like mucus. Wow, and, and for those who don't know, what is bile doing? So bile lives in your gallbladder and bile emulsifies your fat so that your body can absorb fat. So think about like, if you put oil and water together, they separate, right? So what we need is we need the fat to be broken up so our, our bodies can take it in. Mm-hmm. So they're not separated like oil and water. And so bile will come in, it will emulsify or, or what soap does to oil, basically it'll open it up so that the body can absorb the fat. Mm-hmm. 
the same concept as, as oil and water. So, um, but this is the thing that's most left out. Bile is the salt, and all salts are antimicrobial. So if you want to break the bad bacteria in your gut, you need a certain amount of natural antimicrobials to come and wash the intestines, to kill the bad bacteria, to present for the healthy ones. Mm. And that's the function of bio. And that's not what we're thinking about. No. So, okay. It's crazy. To me, gallbladder bile is, is so vitally important. And then, you know, and this is what's crazy in the conventional world, they're like, oh, you don't need your gallbladder, just take it out. Right. Everybody's got their gallbladder out. I'm like, no, you need your gallbladder. <laughs> well, it's there for a reason, right? It's like, na it's like nature had a plan, right? Yeah, it's like, that's not, that's so vital. Like, to me, when I think about I'm like, that's so vital. So I put everybody on bile who has no gallbladder. Mm. And I find that their health incredibly, like, enhances. So what about people who do have a gallbladder? What are we doing? How do we have not sandpapery bile, but good flowy, antimicrobial, mucusy bile? Have you heard of Tudka? Yes. Okay. Yes, T U D C A. C A. Yeah. yeah. Tudka is very interesting. I use, I've been using Tudka. Dandelion root extract is the most famous, uh, what's called a cologog or a mover of bile. Um, and then I give pancreatin with ox bile. I do, I do bile from oxens. Mm. And that seems to help stimulate. So you. Um, so it just goes down to like physiology and kind of what's missing. And I do a gut analysis on most people to see which one of those organs. So it's the digestive markers that I'm always looking at. Yeah. Which one of those organs are not functioning properly. And I can tell you in every single gut case, there's always one of them that's off. Wow. If not all three. Wow. Well, to think about that, it's like, of course. Of course. You know? Of course. It, and of course, right? I remember... That was a philosophy I took when I was doing gut stuff. I was like, okay, wait, wait, wait. Chew your food. What about your stomach? You know, okay. <laughs> what about the pancreas? What about the gut? What about the bile? Yeah. What about the, um, the gallbladder? Yeah. And inevitably, the, most people started feeling better, especially with the stomach part, because it's most upstream. It's like yeah. a lot of us are just so stressed that our stomach acid isn't just ready. You yeah. know, it's, not, it's just not signaling anything else downstream. Yeah. But I love that we talked about bile because... Again, you don't hear someone going, hey, listen, I'm the foremost bile expert. I got to tell you all about this bile stuff, right? So it's really important to have that conversation because, man, surgeons are just taking their scissors and clipping out the gallbladder and throwing it in the trash. And you're like, you're good now. Yeah. You know? But it's not, it's there for a reason. Yeah. Um, powerful stuff. What about, uh, and, I, and I love that we talked about that weight loss drug, man. This is, this, I'm telling you, man, I can't wait to be all lean up for next summer. Summer 2023. I'm stepping in there, man. Wait till I do my heal, heal thy six pack. That's yeah. what it's going to be. <laughs> Element is a tasty electrolyte drink. Man, I love using this. I've been using it for about a year now. And it utilizes everything you need without all of the crap. You're getting all the good electrolytes from the salt, but you ain't getting any of the sugar. It contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio of 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, 60 milligrams of magnesium. No sugar, no artificial coloring, no artificial ingredients, gluten, or fillers. Element is formulated to help anyone with their electrolyte needs and perfectly suited to fit your lifestyle, whether you're paleo, carnivore, vegan, low carb, it doesn't matter. If you're drinking water that's filtered, that is removing the minerals, you wanna make sure you're replenishing it, especially if you're working out, especially if you're sweating, especially if you're using the sauna, but really just day to day too. Element can help eliminate headaches, muscle cramps, fatigue, sleeplessness, and other common symptoms of electrolyte deficiency. So ever since I've been using Element, I felt better when I've added it to my hydration routine. It's helped limit headaches and fatigue throughout the day. Right now, Element is offering you, the Heal Thyself listeners, free sample packs with any purchase. You get eight single serving packets free with any Element order. This is a great way to try all eight flavors or share Element with your friend. Get yours at drinkelement.com slash DRG. This deal is only available through my link. You must go to drinkelement, D-R-I-N-K, L-M-N-T dot com slash DRG. Element offers no question asked refund totally risk-free. If you don't like it, they will give you your money back, no questions asked. You ain't got nothing to lose. Drink Element. You know that I'm not a fan of my house smelling like strong chemicals. It is one of my biggest pet peeves when I walk out of house and it smells like synthetic fragrances left and right. 
especially when cleaning. Now, I prefer human safe, non-toxic, sustainable, clean ingredients when cleaning surfaces on my home. Branch Basics offers this at a cost-effective rate. Now, what they are are non-toxic, hypoallergenic, and fragrance-free, hormone-free disruptors. These products are amazing, right? They have none of the preservatives that are making you, your home, your respiratory system, your baby, your pets sick. The beautiful thing is they have one concentrate they use for everything. It could be used for counters, floors, laundries, bathroom, dishes, hand soap, even washing produce. They also have the oxygen boost, which can be used for laundry, stain removers, pots and pans, tile and grout. They're a sustainable brand because you only need to purchase the bottles once. So you ain't throwing away all this plastic adding to this burden that the world is carrying. You can choose between the aesthetic glass or the plastic bottles, but you're gonna use it once. And it's much nicer than ordinary cleaning supplies. Once you run out, all you need to do is repurchase the concentrate and oxygen boost to refill the bottles. So if you don't know where to start, Branch Basics offers the premium starter kit that includes cleaning essentials, laundry kit, and the classroom kit. So right now you can get 15% off of any starter kit with my code DRG. Just go to links.branchbasics.com slash DRG. Now is the time you can start cleaning your space safely and efficiently. You do some stuff in your clinic and it's called stem cells. Yeah. And I sort of mentioned it a few years ago. Um, and, I, and, and there wasn't much that I was seeing yet, but it's had to have blown up at this point. What's going on with stem cells? Do they help? Are they real? Are there good studies? What have you seen in your clinic? Where do we go with this? Um, so stem cells got declared illegal by the FDA in June of 2021. Mm -hmm. They blacklisted, like, there was a bunch of, like, even IPO companies that were on the market for stem cells. Whoa. Predictive biohealth is the big one, right? Got wiped out in a day. Crazy. Um, and I used to use, I used to use Stemel and Predictive and all these companies. And so my training's in orthopedic injections as well as systemic health. And so I was injecting a bunch of knees and backs and elbows and all that stuff and seeing miraculous changes. Guys that were walking in on crutches, walking out, feeling great. Like really crazy, like overnight stuff. It was wild. Um, I've been able to keep some of that miracle going, um, but now I've been but now I've been doing exosomes, mm. and exosomes are kind of like the don't talk about it <laughs> mm. <laughs> because exosomes are stem cell derivatives. So they take these stem cells, they aggravate them, and they release exosomes. Exosomes are still legal; they're not FDA approved for anything. So patients have to understand that they're not regulated by the FDA. Um, however, I've been seeing insane results with them. Mm. So and exosomes, people can go to the regenerative clinic and they're doing this? Yeah, so a lot of regenerative clinics have exosomes in them. Are they safe? It's, it's, so the beautiful part is, they're, in my opinion, they're safer than stem cells because they're acellular. There's no DNA. Right, so it's not going to affect your DNA. Yeah, so, they're, so it's, it's, apparently it's what the stem cell, how the stem cell is regenerating you is by releasing exosomes in your body to fix that thing. Mm. So there's been a lot of research on it and on, on miracles. And um, really, it's uh, burn victims that they saw the most, the most amount of incredible. That, that's how they saw that these exosomes are helping, because they will literally take like a third degree burn victim, pour exosomes on the burn, and then the burn heals. Wow. And there's crazy before and afters on exosome therapy for that. Wow. So then they became approved as a topical. Mexico City launched a crazy study for COVID. I can tell you clinically, I've seen pretty much transformations with COVID symptoms within 24 hours of giving somebody exosomes. All their symptoms are gone. There's a massive study out of Mexico City for exosomes in, in COVID. Um, and then, I, you know, when I, we put them in joints, that's like it repairs the joints. Even for people who have had arthritis for quite a while? Especially arthritis. Wow. Especially. Degenerative diseases of the spine. and Depends. If you can put them into the, I can't do that by law, I can't put them into the can't disc. Okay. But you can do the facet joints, right? As naturopaths, we can put them in and around the facet joints. So okay. um, that heals arth arthritic conditions in the spine. And Wow. So that, anywhere huh? you put them, man, they're amazing. Exosome. So do you think yeah. that, do you think that they will be growing in popularity, more studies, more, uh, do you think, how, where is it going to be in five years? Or is the FDA going to go, nope? Healing too many people. We need them drugs for your joints. Uh, 
Yeah, I think the latter. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, thank God for the weight loss drug. Huh? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I hear you, man. I hear you. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm so scared of the FDA seems to be trying to limit the exposure for everything lately, right? Glutathione, they took away th uh, desiccated thyroid recently. Mm. There was a black, like they took, they've been taking away a lot. B12 was on the list of things that they wanted to take yeah, recently. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Was it, was the other There's one? There's just a massive campaign against natural care. Yeah, I mean, it's, and it, it's concerning and it's a legitimate conversation. Like what is happening? And then stem cells got, stem cells were fine forever and then now they're illegal. You know, so in the last two or three years, I've had some major tools that were really helpful to take, be taken away from me. Wow, man. And I, and I can Alpha imagine. Alpha lipoic acid. Yeah, that's one that I was thinking of, right? And it was funny. I saw a guy on uh, Instagram. He's like, this is how you make your own alpha lipoic acid. And he's like, he's like a scientist. And he's like, do, 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 do. And he's adding drippy droppies on there. And yeah. I was like, onto powder. And I was like, and he's like, here you go. The reaction has created. <laughs> For four dollars, you can make your own. It's crazy. Uh, it's like it's crazy. literally naturopathic yeah. doctors are going to be breaking bad doctors, yeah, you know, like in the yeah. lab making their own glutathione. Right. It's wild. Um, you can't get glutathione in California anymore. You can't get any. If I go on any nebulized glutathione, I cannot get. Wow. I can't get injectable glutathione. There is no pharmacy in California that I can order glutathione now. Not even nebulized. I remember there was people using nebulized glutathione for COVID, and they were doing any so well. So well. Glutathione, the world's best antioxidant, you cannot get in liquid form from a pharmacy anymore. Wow. Can I go online right now and get it, though? Mm -hmm. I can't go. It, it won't come to California, you're saying. You literally cannot get it to California. Wow. So I got to go out of the state just to pack up my glutathione and then come back with it. If you, you bet you need a doctor order it. If you, I mean, you can get powder. Right, right, right. For sure. But if you want to breathe it in, if you want to put it in an IV. Yeah. And that's crazy. You can't get it. That's it's gone. gone. Glutathione's gone. Listen, I've been out the game so long, I don't even know what they're taking out from under the rug. But, <laughs> but by the time I come back, I'm going to put on a white coat and be like, what the hell happened to my repertory? <laughs> yeah, exactly. My dispensary, half of it is I'm gone. Like, I might have a year left in clinic. I mean, they're, soon they're, yeah, there's a whole thing on supplements now that they're trying to come after. Oh, like, boy. Oh, boy. That's I scary. I don't know. It's, it's a beautiful time because of how much knowledge we have. And it's also such a scary time because... They're trying to limit our ability to help. Yeah, yeah. You you mentioned about uh, hormones, and I want to talk a little yeah. bit about this. There's a lot of people suffering with hormone disruption. Yeah. Uh, a lot. And and I think it's a big driver for so many of our diseases. Yeah. First of all, why are so many people's hormones all over the place out of whack? Yeah. And what are some of the best things that you do or you recommend as yeah. a doctor for bettering your hormone status, testosterone, progesterone, estrogen, yeah. cortisol, all of them? Yeah. Um, so my two major specialties is gut and hormones. And, and the reason they're my specialties is because I have found that I cannot help people optimize their life without optimizing their gut and their hormones. Yeah. I find that those two things, when you optimize in somebody's life, that's lights on, they feel amazing, they're ready to go, their sex life is great, their skin's better, they digest better, they have more energy, more vitality, they remember who they are. The anxiety is gone, you know, really transformations of people's life. And I found that if you just focus on gut or you just focus on hormones, you're missing, you're missing the other half of the best. So that's really ultimately why both of those have been such um, deep dives for me in terms of the research and, and what to do. So, um, uh, you know, I, I, think, I think to answer your first question, why? I mean, they're noticing male testosterone is like at all time lows. Um, I don't know if it's because there's so much contraception in our drinking supply, right? You know all about that, mm -hmm. right? Like we're drinking birth control, so we're drinking estrogen, and then phytoestrogens with all the plastics, right? When before were we drinking water out of a billion plastic? Everything's out of plastic now. Mm -hmm. Actually, the scariest thing anybody told me was when you get your coffee, the grade of the lid is the lowest form of plastic there is, and you're smashing hot vapors into a very moldable plat, and so you're just dripping plastic into your coffee. Yeah. Everybody in the country is drinking coffee. <laughs> I know, I know. Right, so not just the coffee potential issues of coffee, but like you're literally drinking plastic all day. And then, yeah, it's... I mean, so anyway, I don't know. That's the environmental medicine is just a sad topic, but uh, yeah, I, I think the phytoestrogens. Um, you know, there's a whole movement for veganism and vegetarianism, which you know, on one hand is beautiful, but on the other hand, they're eating GMO soy. 
mm. which is a phytoestrogen, right? So we're upping our estrogen, we're upping our cortisol, we're upping our anxiety. That's going to translate. Mm. Well, it makes sense. And it's funny, uh, Dr. Catherine Zagoni, she was just here yeah. talking about a coffee lid. No way. She was just talking about really? last week about coffee, coffee lids, how we're drinking a chemical soup. <laughs> so you right? said, okay, so you've so heard it's that funny. It's fu- yeah. I was like, wow, yeah. it's funny that you're just saying it because, yeah, yeah like I think the environment, and this is what I was doing, environmental medicine, yeah. that, that was my specialty. That was? Yeah, so, so you know. Dude, yeah. talking about BPAs and phthalates and, yeah. and PFAS and all of the stuff that is in just one cup of coffee. I remember I used to drink one matcha f- uh, from Starbucks years ago when I uh, worked in this clinic in San Francisco because it was up the street, yeah. right? So I'd come in, put my stuff down, you know, my clients coming or my patients coming in 45 minutes, I'll go right across the street, get my matcha. Mm-hmm. And then I remember I took a test, an environmental toxin test, styrene, BPA was through the roof, phthalates were through the roof. I go, what the hell? I go, I don't yeah. need, I have a, this beautiful glass water filter, I've been avoiding this, and then it hit me. And I, I was a cup. It was the, it was the cup that was just lined in all that plastic, and I was yeah. drinking from the top. I stopped it. I retested. Gone. It's crazy. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. Just, just drinking one matcha of like that's every crazy. other day had it up through the roof, and that's what affects your fertility. Yeah. You know, your just testosterone. You feel even stronger. That oomph. Yeah. That men get. You yeah. know. Um, all right. So all these things are affecting it. Right. So now people are viewing, listening, they go, okay. I, Man, I drink Shit. all of this coffee. <laughs> I drink my matchas. It's it, you know, and and yeah. I, I just can't take the get lid off. I can't get yeah, take the lid <laughs> off exactly. The lid off. Don't burn Start yourself. Just take the lid off. I can't get I can't get rid of everything. But right. what are some things that we can do here to start yeah. optimizing our hormones from the expert? So so hormones is one of those things people come a lot for me for. I do a lot of hormone optimization. Um, this very exciting thing I want to talk about. I can't talk about with hormones, but. We'll have to talk about it soon. We're going to check in with you. We're going to check in. Uh, I will have something for people with hormones soon. But um, ultimately, you can't really guess where your hormones are. So I'm just a big proponent of just get them tested. You know, it's a very easy test. Any blood lab, if you if you have the money, you could do a Dutch test. Right? Dutch is amazing. It's a great um, test. I used to use it all the time. Yeah. Man. So urinary hormones are incredible, but they're hard to understand. Um, just do a blood test. If you're low, talk to a specialist. I don't really have, I don't have a great strategy because it's not something that you can guess based on the symptom unless you really understand all the different levels of hormones. So the big ones are if you have fat retention, water retention, probably you have too much estrogen. And then the easiest thing you can do is take DIM. However, DIM can be problematic depending on how you metabolize your estrogens. So it's just one of those things. It's like, you know, if you want a professional to do your accounting and you want really good, right? You want some money back from the government? (laughs) You hire a professional? That's kind of how I feel about hormones. It's not something that... I mean, this stage for me, like like the complexity that I see hormones is very hard to help somebody. But like, you know, if it's basic stuff, like, okay, so for men, I guess if it's a uh, horny goat weed is great. Um, Yohimbi, mm-hmm. you know, those are great herbs for guys. Even deer antler I've been hearing is incredible for libido. Mm-hmm. So those are easy ones for guys to take if they just want to feel a little bit more vital. But a lot of times, it's, it's, there's just not enough testosterone and too much estrogen. So you have to boost the es- testosterone and you have to decrease the estrogens. For women, the complexity is much greater, right? They, but this is what I tell all females. You don't have to suffer with hormone. I don't feel like females have to suffer with hormone issues. Like, they suffer because they think that it's societally normal. They're like, of course I have cramps and PMS and all this. It's not true. It's a dysregulation in the hormones that's causing you to have symptoms like anything else, and then once you fix that dysregulation, you don't have to experience hormonal issues. Mm -hmm. Which is easy enough to be crazy to believe. It's crazy for them to believe, yeah, Yeah. because they're like, oh my God, this is normal. I just have an easy period. I don't have a week of crying hysterically before my period. And then it lasts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a female, but I've I've been, been around. a lot of yeah. yeah, I've been around. I've been around them too, man. I've been around painful periods, man. I was like, what can I do? I remember yeah. running and getting, a, uh, uh, what did I do? I, I had like a hot pack and I put a towel around it and I was just putting it there. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay. Please, but, God. Yeah, but it, it wasn't like a hot pack. It was like a 
at home once, I had to keep microwaving it every 10 minutes, <laughs> yeah. back and forth. It was like, yeah, I get it. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm down, I get yeah. it. So, but you're right. It's not just like, I read this blog about my testosterone, now I gotta do this. Or this blog about my estrogen, progesterone, the balance, the ratios, now I'm gonna do this. It's more like, let's see it on paper, so we know exactly what to do. Exactly, yeah, you know? and let's figure out the cause of why this is happening too, right? Yeah, and, and you know, I always tell people environmental toxins are, you can't escape them, but right. you slowly start making those trade-offs, right. right? Like, I'm not gonna drink Evian water from the plastic every single day. Right. Start getting a water filter, right? right? The stuff in your home, cleaning up the air, right? right? Not living in a bed, bath, and beyond, you know, not right. being around scents and sprays right. and wearing cologne and Glade plugins. All this stuff is slow, but surely we can start really doing better by our, thermal, yeah. our hormones. But when I hear about testosterone, man, a lot of men are just suffering, dude. It's so bad. It's like, look, it's I'm crazy. 38 now. Yeah. A lot of my colleagues are like, my, or my friends I grew up with, they're just like, yo, man, I'm 38. I'm hurting, man. Yeah. I don't want to have sex anymore. Man. Yeah. My libido Every guy I know at 40 years old is done having sex. It's crazy. But, 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 but is, it, is it because of the environmental toxins? What the heck? Like, because I, I I remember generations before, like I talked to older generations. Yeah, they're like, no, no, it's good till seventy. But they're good till seventy, man. <laughs> yeah. But dude, guys our age, yeah. we're hurting. What it, it, uh, aside from horny, horny goat weed? Do you think it's it's or, or the yo or the yeah. or the makas of the world? Yeah. Um, is there well, any lifestyle I, stuff too? Yeah. So so sleep, stress. That's the biggest thing, and then and then uh, squats. Dude, I, that's what I say. I, I tell everyone, squats. Squats? You Dude, wait, wait, squat let's get into the squats. <laughs> okay. Dude, because, yo, I, I've been saying this since I remember I did a post on squats in 2015. Yeah. Why are squats so important for men? Because that's where you make your testosterone from your legs. It, that's where it's p p coming out from. Your legs, yeah. That's your powerhouse. Wow. Yeah. So if we have low T, and, and we're like, man, I, I ain't been wanting to have sex with my partner. I'm dragging through life. I'm not vital. I tried horny goat weed, but it didn't work. You Dim mean, sleep squats. <laughs> that's it. That's it. DSS. The holy, yeah. <laughs> the holy trinity. The the DSS. Holy trinity, yeah. Dude, okay, listen. Yeah. And yeah. then I've been putting a lot of guys on enclomiphene. And that's what? Enclomiphene, um, are you familiar with uh, Clomid? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, so, it's a steroid. No, it? uh, Clomiphene, is, is it a steroid? Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me go back. In the Jersey Shore steroid culture, <laughs> Clomid was part of the okay. name that you hear for okay. people who want to get really ripped. Okay, so it's just a stimulant, a stimulant. for, it's a, it releases FSH and LH. Okay. So Clomid just pushes on the brain to, to the pituitary to release more, or is a hypothalamus, to release more um, uh, uh, luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. And those are the signaling hormones that you need to make more um, sperm, which results in more testosterone. Interesting. Right, so... Um, that's all Clomid does. So Clomid pushes on all the centers to do that, which increases both estrogen and testosterone. And then in Clomiphene, is supposed to, theoretically, sometimes it doesn't work as great as I want it to, but it's only supposed to boost just the testosterone that's and not the way. estrogen. Yeah. Which so I've been powerful. doing either Clomid and anastrozole on a lot of people. I don't really like giving testosterone anymore. And why? Because I know a lot of clinics around here, they do testosterone shots. Yeah. And a lot of men ask, hey, Can I get, put me on some... I'm 40, tea. should I go on testosterone Way shots? Way too early. Too early to do Way it. Way too early. I don't put people on testosterone until they're late 50s. Late 50s, if until 60. And why? What's the negative effect? Because I can get there. Because why, why put them on testosterone? First of all, it's a shot every week for the rest of your life. That's crazy, right? That's crazy. If you don't need to, if you need to, whatever. But if you don't have to, I can give them clomiphene, which is a pill or two a week, and it boosts their own production. So what's better than your own source of hormone? Right. Right? If I don't have to give you hormone, I can make you make your own, right? And I'm that's a, better. Yeah, I'm always worried about exogenous sources anyway. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, it's fine. Like, testosterone injections, if you need them, are fine. And if you can't boost, but this is what's crazy. Like, I've seen a bunch of guys who are like, oh, I've done testosterone shots for four years. I'm like, let me get you off that. Let me see what your body can produce. Nothing. It's in the hundreds. Like, awful. Great. Let me give you Clomid. High dose Clomid. Let me really push that signal. They can't make it anymore. Wow. I've seen that so many times. And when I first started practice, I was. I was giving people testosterone injections because that was the... That was the that's thing. That's what everybody yeah, was doing, I remember. right? Yeah. That was the education. Put everybody on testosterone. Cool. Everybody goes on testosterone. And then I did all this research and I was like, 
wait a minute, look, hold on a second. I mean, I didn't put that many people, but I put enough people on it. And, um, and then I took all those people off, and then I gave them Clomid, and I got all their levels high, and then I got them off their Clomid, and their levels stayed high. Oh, wow, so it just brought it up and kept it up. Yeah. And you say levels. And I've seen this in 30-year-olds, which is crazy. 25-year-old, 30-year-olds. I had a 27-year-old whose testosterone was 246. Like, Super low. What? Super, yeah. And, and, and Super again, low. And again, is it you think that we're staying up, the phones, sleeping poor? Yeah, exactly. It, it, mm. It's just a lifestyle. Yeah. Interesting. So the sleep is being, because I know sleep is massive, but yeah. it's being disrupted with this. Yeah. Now we're super stressed, even yeah. more stressed, especially with the signals of the phone. Yeah. I'm not just saying it's just phone, but big part of it. Yeah. And we're not on the honey goat weed. <laughs> but, 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 okay, so, and, and yeah. you say, oh, there's a lot of people listening, viewing. Yeah. What do you look for in a number for testosterone? What's a good number versus like 900. Convention? 900. That's higher than what we, a lot of people say is a good testo I testosterone like 900. level. 900 is healthy. Well, the, the range goes to 1,100. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking about like standard labs, standard. right? Standard yeah. labs. So it depends on the reference range of the lab you're looking at, but I like it a 100 or 200 points just under. Okay. As long as their platelets aren't high and they don't have coagulation issues and they're not creating, you know. Otherwise, then I'll go to like six or 700. Mm -hmm. It's also how they feel, right? That's a big component of it. Yeah. So I'm looking at like, how do you feel on this testosterone? Do you notice the difference between 400, 600, 800, 900? Yeah. If you don't, testosterone's not your, it's not the issue for you. Then it's other stuff. Let me tell you something. I got my test last year, it was a thousand. And that's because your guy over here was squatting hard. <laughs> <laughs> but I need to sleep better. Yeah. Dude, the phone, you know, I work for my phone, so I'm always on at the blue light, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I try yeah. to put the blue blockers, yeah. but I'm still, yeah. the sleep can always be more optimized. Are you cold plunging? I have a cold plunge, man. I haven't in a while, man. So you like cold plunge for testosterone? Yeah. T t tell me a little bit about this. Why, why, is, it, why is it important? Um... Well, one, um, if you're super inflamed, I feel like that is more correlative to estrogen generally, right? So cold plunge just reduces inflammation ultimately, and then it st stimulates all your white blood cells to proliferate, mm -hmm. which helps your clean up all the stuff. And then t I just feel like testosterone flows better. I don't know. Yeah, a lot of people but, say uh, put, it, put, your, put your testicles in cold, and it helps for your testosterone. So when I lived, so my residency was in Montana. And I can tell you the best I ever felt was when I'd go to the Sulphur Springs every weekend and I would jump between the freezing, like we'd jump in the, like, the lake yeah. and go into the hot spring and jump in the Yellowstone. And we would literally jump between the Sulphur Springs in the river and it was like invigorating. I mean, you felt... Oh, I know. You know. I was just like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, your, test, your testosterone was through the roof. You were yeah, back to your primal self. I was like, everything was great, you know, you so... Can't go, you can't go wrong. So I'm building, uh, I just bought a house, I'm building a, a triple infrared sauna, a cold plunge. Whoa. I got it all, you got to come over. <laughs> Bro, I'm coming. I got, I got the cold plunge outside, and I got the, yeah. the, the, I got a nice little sauna in, the, in one of my small rooms oh, in nice. there, a little, little sauna area. But dude, Invigorating. Yeah. When I'm in the sauna, yeah. we even have some video over here at the studio. I'm in the sauna, I jump in the cold plunge. Yeah. I hate jumping in the cold plunge. Yeah. I hate it, but it, it helps so much. It helps so much. You, man, you inspire me. I need to fill it up. I haven't used it in like yeah. a month or two. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because... It's hard now when it's cold. It's starting dude, to get cold and you're like, oh, I don't want to do this. So but Tony hard. Robbins inspires me all the time. Because he's like, it's the worst part of my day. But I make sure I do it every day. And he does it every day. Every day he does it. Dude, when I was doing it, so I was doing it like 12 minutes a week, right? So three, six, nine, 12. I would do it like kind of split into four. Cool. Um, different person. My brain was... Yeah. My energy was... Right. You know, it's yeah. like... So I, I, I'm a big proponent. Yeah. And people who don't have a cold tub, cold shower. Yeah, exactly. Just make it nice and cold. Yeah, exactly. And in cold and it's already... Most people have a tub. Yeah. Just fill it. Put some ice in it. Oof. Man, I know, I hear you, man. I'm just thinking about it right now. It's like, all right, yeah. Well, you, no, it's a commitment. It's it, not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's way easier to go to a spa where they have it. You just jump in and don't have to worry about it. But. Yeah. There's a lot of people talk about putting, um, sunning their scrotum. Sunning their... I heard that, this whole yoni. It's a whole, it's a whole thing. Yoni. <laughs> it, it, it's, it, dude, it's funny. I just did I've a show. I've been hanging out in Venice too long. You're hanging out in Venice. <laughs> dude, no, I, I just did a show talking about perineal and butthole sunning and if it's, if it's the real deal. Really? The answer is no. It's no. Dude, you shouldn't do it. <laughs> Sensitive skin, man. You're going to burn. It's not good. It's not good, man. Just, That's just really go good. out in the sun, but you know. Get, Everybody asks me. I'm going to tell them. You tell me. It's, it's, dude, it's, dude, tell them. Tell them. Send them to the show. Look, he, look man, I appreciate you uh, and your wisdom 
and and your insights and your gems and and, and the expanse of like the naturopathic but also the innovative yeah. uh, approaches that we can take to health. Um, okay. People are viewing, listening, whether or not they live in LA, they may want to come even see you from out of state. Where do they find you? So we just launched a new site. It's called citrinwellness.com. And uh, I'm in Beverly Hills. You're in Beverly Hills, man. You've got the Beverly Hills clothes, but little do they know on the weekends, you're the Venice guy. I'm the Venice guy. You're, you're, that, you're the cold plunge in in your new place. You're, you're Mr. Come Venice. Man. Me up. My brother, I appreciate you. All right, man. Man, it's been a year in the making and the Heal Thyself merch is finally here. You know, it took a while to find companies that are organic or sustainable. It's the only thing we want to bring to y'all with the spirit of Heal Thyself, right? You want the best of the best. You want the cleanest stuff going into your body and making contact with every single day. So we have an incredible Black Friday sale for this merch. This is available from Thanksgiving to Cyber Monday. But don't miss out because here's what's happening. If you spend 150, you're gonna get 10% off. If you spend 200, you're gonna get 15% off. The holiday season is coming up and this is an incredible gift idea. Listen, if you got a loved one who goes, hey, I love Heal Thyself, I, I love listening to all the shows, it's been helpful, then give them the gift of the Heal Thyself swag. Get them a hat, get them a hoodie, get them a shirt. If you yourself are a supporter of the show and we got some awesome designs, rock that swag and walk around and represent because if Heal Thyself is changing your life. It's not only a podcast, it's a movement. So go to hts.today to get your official Heal Thyself merch. As you know, it's all USDA organic cotton and the sweatshirt is hemp. It's the best of the best stuff out there. Comfy, cozy, stylish, all for you Heal Thyself listeners. Much love. All right, everyone want to talk about brain health right now. Brain health is so hot. Look, it was gut health a while ago. Now everyone's talking about the brain, of course. A lot of us are becoming mentally imbalanced. And our mental imbalance is a lot of the ways coming from the disruption, yes, between our gut, but the inflammation that's happening in our brain. And we are living in a world through nutrition and environmentally that is putting a burden on our brain health. So it would behoove us to understand there are things out there for us that can really, really benefit us and our health of our brain, reducing inflammation and really adding to the vitality of it. But before we go into that, I want you to understand, BDNF is an essential chemical. I did a show on this back in 2019. And David Perlmutter, who is one of the foremost experts, doctors out there, talking about growth hormone for the brain, that is BDNF. It's a family of proteins called neurotrophins. These are for the survival, development, and functional of your brain cells in your brain, the neurons and it's a brain vitality protein. It helps boost communication, helps boost your long-term memory. What's neurogenesis? This is the growth of new brain cells. BDNF activates that, but it also helps in neuroplasticity. This is the new connections between brain cells. Now, when it comes to cognitive diseases, right, neurocognitive diseases, ones that break down your brain like dementia, BDNF is found to be reduced. It may also be reduced in healthy people who have a predisposition to dementia. So BDNF is really essential to optimize even when we're in our young age as we get older to make sure we're putting ourselves in a place to have really strong focus and cognition when we get older. Sex, age, and smoking status are associated with BDNF levels and dementia risk. Consistently, we see, especially in women, the theory that BDNF interacts with hormonal changes and that may drive dementia. It may be actually a predictive biomarker for future dementia risk or prognosis in dementia patients. So, there was a study in the Journal of American Medical Association, JAMA. Boston University measured baseline BDNF levels in a group of adults and followed them for 10 years. They found that those individuals with the highest baseline level of BDNF developed dementia 50% less often compared to those with the lowest level. Very important to think about how important of a biomarker BDNF is in the body. But not only that, not just dementia, it's also linked to depression, OCD, schizophrenia. So BDNF and physical activity go hand in hand. The majority of the US adults are not even coming close to 150 minutes to moderate to rigorous exercise. I'll say that again, 150 minutes in the week. And we don't know the exact mechanism, but we know that BDNF plays a major role connected to exercise. Now, it brings blood to the brain it increases brain tissue growth, right? Especially when it comes to the cellular genesis. In a recent study in the Journal of Neurology, 
Alzheimer's biomarkers were reduced in uh, dominant mutation carriers with a high versus low level of physical exercise, right? Another recent study showed that even moderate exercise may be beneficial in reducing Alzheimer's pathology. BDNF is released from the brain already at rest, but it increases two to threefold when you're working out. Now, in healthy humans, there appears to be a positive linear relationship between exercise intensity and positive short-term effect of acute exercise on BDNF levels. Continuous moderate to higher versus HIT workouts, HIT being a bit more measurable for BDNF. So movement for about 20 to 30 minutes a day at a higher intensity has been shown to be really beneficial for BDNF. But not only that, what about stress? Now we talk about stress being one of the major drivers for aging, right? Increasing our biological age. So we may be 35, 36, 37 years old, but our biological age may be in the 40s. Stress and environmental toxins are the big drivers for this. But when it comes to stress, it's gonna affect your brain cognition. You ever notice when you're really stressed, whether it be physically, like you didn't really sleep, you haven't been eating crappy, you haven't been exercising and you're kind of out of focus, you're just not there. Or you may be really stressed, have a lot of things going on and you're not really there. Brain cognition is really, really important. And the lower amount of brain cognition with the higher amount of stress, you're gonna get lack of attention, lack of memory. It's gonna additionally ramp up the anxiety centers in your brain, right? Animals with prolonged stress reduces the prefrontal cor cortex activity and higher order tasks that need to be done are reduced, you have more trouble doing them. And it activates the amygdala. This is the survival part of our brain. We become in survival mode. We live our life in survival mode rather than understanding higher order tasks and bringing our awareness there and being able to complete just because we're stressed and stressed and stressed and our brain becomes inflamed. We believe that all of our brain structuring happens in infancy and childhood, right? And then it's our brain the rest of our lives, but no, that ain't true. Neuroplasticity is the concept of our brain always moving, malleable, growing, shrinking, rewiring every single day. Now, chronic or acute stress and cortisol decreases BDNF, and it's been seen in the rat's hippocampus and their prefrontal cortex, right? So again, putting them away from those higher level thoughts and into the amygdala where they're in survival mode. Acute stress more significantly decreases BDNF. So a lot of people who are under stress show less levels of that biomarker BDNF, really important for the brain, brain health, brain focus, attention, memory. Exercise, mindfulness, meditation, and yoga, that's really important way of increasing BDNF getting into the body. What's another really nice hack? You hear me talk about hot and cold, right? Saunas and cold plungers or putting your bathtub or your shower in cold, cold water is really important. Why? Well, acute exposure to hot, and cold, especially in contrast, increases BDNF for six hours, right? So you know that if you're in the sauna, you're sweating, and then you're immediately taking a cold shower, jumping in a cold tub, you got the rest of the day with your BDNF on high level. And I can attest to that. I know anecdotally, every time I'm going into the hot and then the cold, I'm good for the day. I'm ready for the podcast. I'm ready for any conversations I need to have, any work I need to do. But what about food? The standard American diet is the worst for BDNF. It is the worst thing for your brain. High fat, high in refined sugars is an atomic bomb to the brain. Two months of the standard American diet was enough to reduce BDNF levels in an animal study. And they found that neuroplasticity in the brain was reduced proportional to the drop in BDNF. We add sugar into our diet and has been shown to have a destructive effect on that chemical in our brain and thus our brain overall. What's really important to be consuming? Well, high flavonoids in foods, these are found as plant metabolites and they're phytonutrients. And they have many important subgroups, but some of the most important ones for the brain and brain health are EGCG. Those are the catechins that are found in green tea that are really helpful for our brain and inflammation and helping BDNF. Genistein and soy, a lot of people villainize soy and it's not based on much data uh, and a lot of not understanding of the impact or the mechanism of soy in the body. But genistein has been one of the most powerful flavonoid-rich antioxidants, but it's also important for the brain. And of course, anthocyanidins. We're talking about red, blue, purple colored foods, the berries. The darker and riper, the better. Blueberries, blackberries, dark grapes. I have blueberries every single day. I make sure I have it as part of my breakfast because I need to get my brain going for the day. Now, there was a randomized controlled dietary intervention trial 
and is conducted in animal models and humans investigating flavonoid-rich foods, including Camellia sinensis, which is tea, the green tea, the grapes, ginkgo maloba, cocoa, theobroma, and blueberry. These are some of the most enriching foods for BDNF in our brain. And it shows that having diets rich in these foods, the teas, the grapes, the ginkgo, the cocoa, the blueberry, are helpful for enhancing memory and learning. Now, with regard to these foods, right, having a diet rich in these, we find that basically these fruits and vegetables increase BDNF levels in the blood over 18 weeks, right? So you want to do them for a few months, making sure you're having them consistently, knowing that you're increasing BDNF levels and then giving your brain the love that it needs. Cocoa powder, I mentioned, really important one, easy, accessible. Remember, I did a show on cacao. Make sure you're getting ones that are low on heavy metals. I went over all the best brands. Go back to it before you start putting this intervention in your diet. But cocoa powder is important because it led to higher serum BDNF levels and better cognitive performance following 12 weeks of intake, right? And that's relative to well-matched low flavonoid control. So we know that the people who had the intervention of cocoa had better BDNF and stronger brain compared to the controls who had very little. It's also assumed that flavonoids may induce BDNF via multiple pathways in the cell. So we don't know it fully, how it's working on neurons, but we know that this chemical in the brain is, oh, so essential. So high antioxidant foods, very important. Look in your spice cabinet. Rosemary, curcumin, that's the turmeric, the constituent of turmeric. Using these every single day. Cayenne's not on here, but I guarantee it's gonna be helpful for BADNF. We don't know it yet. Maybe there's a study since the show. Gut brain access, oh my God. So important because now we need to understand that it ain't just the brain, it ain't just these foods, but it's the state of your gut. Now, now we're not clear how the gut microbiome affects the brain function, but it's believed to be through various routes. We know that some of the metabolites produced in the gut cross the blood-brain barrier. Butyrate, which is made in the gut via the fermentation of non-digestible fibers by bacteria in the colon, well, that's essential when it comes to the brain. It's a primary energy source for a specific bacteria, but it's also good for your brain. What this is is a vital and mutually beneficial relationship between your brain benefiting with butyrate and your gut eating up that butyrate or creating it as a metabolite. Resistant starches were the highest for creating and helping the brain. Oats, rice, beans, legumes, potatoes, yams, green bananas, all the stuff that the carnivores ain't telling you to eat. Cellulose, cruciferous veggies, leafy greens, nuts and seeds, sprouts, squash, whole grains. Again, foods that are so essential evolutionarily for our gut are also helping our brain. Now there's mounting data in animals for the blood-brain barrier that it's helping for attenuation of neuroinflammation, causing positive effects on cognition, positive effects on enhancing plasticity in the brain. So these foods are so important. What else is important for brain function? Fasting. Protective effects of fasting on the brain cannot be understated. David Perlmutter talks a lot about this. And he mentions maybe once every season doing a full day or two day fast, you know, listen to your body. But what happens is sugar stores deplete after 10 or 14 hours and the ketones are created in the brain. This is the basis of the ketogenic diet, which is not sustainable in my opinion, but in this fasting window, ketones, which are brain protective, are stimulating the production of BDNF. And in one study, mice one day off and one day on increased BDNF levels by 50% on fasting. So other pathways that are activated when you fast are detox, inflammation, and mitochondrial growth. Sunlight is likely going to be helpful for BDNF. We don't know fully the data on it yet, but we also see that vitamin D may or may not be associated with BDNF. Listen, carrying, getting exposure to sunlight is essential for your overall health period. So I always recommend morning sun, midday sun, and trying to see the sunset. What about supplements? A lot of people love supplements. They want to know what they can get. Well, Yale researchers showed that a single dose ooh, of psilocybin given to mice prompted an immediate and long-lasting increase in connections between neurons in the brain. The authors of the study said, we not only saw a 10% increase in the number of neuronal connections, but they were on average about 10% larger to the connections and stronger. So, very important to understand that psilocybin was increasingly important in this study for showing the connection between brain chemistry and brain cells, increasing BDNF and having stronger brain overall function. In the study led by Calvin Lee at the University of California in 2018, the researchers showed that when rat neurons were grown in the lab, adding LSD or DMT to them helped grow them and more branching connections. You know, you can see the um, How to Change Your Mind documentary on Netflix with Michael Pollan. 
and you'll see a little bit more about this, but this can mean that psychedelic compounds may restore areas in the brain that are damaged by depression. So there you have it, all the stuff, the hottest stuff. Everybody's talking about brain, man, this BDNF stuff, it's so important. Listen, we got some foods, we got some lifestyle stuff, we got interventions that are easy to make. This is not asking you to spend $3,000 on a device. It ain't asking you to take all the time out of your day to just give your brain some love. It's really just interventions that you can do. Now you know some good foods to eat. Now you know exercise is so important. Start doing those and start tracking. What's your focus like? Short-term memory long-term memory, right? What has your mood been like? Inevitably, you'll find it growing more and more and more, getting better, and it's likely to be DNF.